Chấm điểm xua. Uh, good morning, my name is Rosie and I am a journalist at Cambodia Nest. Um, today I'm bringing you a small discussion on the book that I am holding in my hands right now, uh, which is called Hôn Mà Nhi's Hope. Um, Hôn Mà Nhi's Hope is written by Mr. Liêng Đô Lúc, a publisher at Mây Thu Mây and has been officially launched since April 28. However, um, there will be a discussion even for this book, uh, which will uh, be held in Siem province. But uh, before we get into the detail of the discussion for this book in Siem Reap province, um, the readers might be curious on uh, whether we should read this book or uh, why we should find out about the character in this book, which is Mr. Hon Mani. And today, um, Jom Na is with me and um, he has read this book and today uh, he will uh, um, brief us on Um, the overview of the book as well as um, his perspective and um, the key takes away and the lessons that he has learned um, from the book and from um, the character of Mr. Hon Mani. Good morning, Jamna. Good morning, Rosie. Nice to meet you again. Yes, nice to meet you. Thank you. And you have read this book, if I'm not wrong. Yes. Okay, so, uh, so first of all then, can you brief us um, on the general, general overview of the book as well as um, your um, perspective of this book? So um, basically like the title has mentioned itself, it is uh, very self-explanatory. So we talk about Hon Mani's hope. Uh, many people might know uh, who Hon Mani is. So basically in the book, uh, mainly the author tries to um, show the character of uh, Mr. Hon Mani how uh, you know the society has molded his mindset how the society has molded his you know philosophy his perspective to his own nation to his own uh, self so in this book what the author really wants to highlight is um, what Hormani wants to see in Cambodia in the future the human resources that he wants to make the infrastructure that he wants to bring in to you know his uh, uh, constituency and you know something uh, similar and also the challenges that you know he um, faced uh, along the way the rivalry that he faced you know internally and externally and also the way that he want to you know behave in himself uh, as the new generation of politician for the new generation of Cambodia thank you so um, this book is mainly focusing on the journey of Mr. Hormani as well as um, Uh, his hope for the future of um, our country. So, uh, what parts of the book uh, that are appealing to you the most, or, or have captured your attention the most? Uh, the well uh, in this book, you know, I am a history lover. So, the main part that captures me the most is actually the history of Cambodia after the Khmer Rouge regime. So, uh, how you know, uh, Cambodia um, try to help itself from, you know, the war-torn regime, uh, how Cambodia, you know, struggle, and also how those uh, situations molded Mr. Hun Mani himself to, you know, to, to see those struggle as, you know, an opportunity to grow, to see those struggle as an opportunity to learn and to ultimately uh, get away from those struggle to give the new generation of people who are born later on, you know, well after the Khmer Rouge regime, to have a better life, to have a better, uh, um, you know, opportunity, chances to meet the international, you know, standard. Uh, another point that I am uh, quite interesting about the book is how Hun Mani adjust himself in the new generation of Cambodia. I mean, of course, uh, in the past, politicians are not like today. The way they, uh, let's say, lead the country uh, are usually different because, you, I mean, it's very simple. Uh, the situation are different. The way people react, the way people behave must be different too. So, from 30 years ago and from 30 years into the future, we cannot just, uh, you know, uh, say to him that he will lead the same way as what Uh, his uh, predecessor did, but we have to believe that okay, something something might change in the future. So that is uh, one of the, the the things that I I believe that um, interests me in the book. 
All right. So uh, from what you mentioned, uh, Mr. Hunmani excelled himself by reflecting on um, the history of our country, and then um, um, he hopes to uh, bring what is the best for um, the next generation and use in our country. So then, uh, from the character, what are the lessons that you have learned from him? So in terms of characters, um, I believe that being a politician is a very patient job. I mean, in order to bring up a country from, from one point to the other, you cannot do it alone. No rulers rule alone. So in order to achieve something big, you need to have a collective energy. You have, a, you have to have a common philosophy, a common mindset, so that people might want to follow you and walk on the same path in order to achieve that thing. So the, the main thing is that uh, patience uh, and you know to look at um, the future gradually step by step so another lesson that I have learned from the book also is that even though you are born under a very powerful family even though you are born under a rich family let's say in general um, if you use your parents powers alone if you use your parents influences alone to you know to satisfy or to make people around you uh, think that you are strong like your parents, maybe that's not going to work. So from his uh, activity, which is written in the book here, he tries to prove that he is very capable for himself by not depending everything on his parents. So that is also a lesson learned. Even the uh, lesson learned here is that the young generation have to do something for themselves and for the nation also. They cannot just rely on what uh, their predecessors have done. All right. So um, I can say you have learned um, two lessons from the character Mr. Hunmani, uh, which are the collective energy and patience. So um, can you tell us um, in what way do you think you can apply those lessons in your daily life? Well, first of all, it's not easy. Yeah, that's the first answer. Um, to apply it to the daily life, uh, I mean, of course, we start from small, you know, scale. From my position, I believe that I can apply it to my own family members, let's say from my siblings, from my extended, you know, uh, family members. And I expand that, you know, to, let's say, my classmate, trying to form a, you know, a common, you know, goal in the classroom, you know, to study hard, to have a good grade, to respect the elders, uh, to contribute something back, let's say, to the university or to the workplace or to the community. So by doing from those small scale first, you start learning the lessons along the way. You start knowing how people behave in certain area, how people, you know, uh, communicate in certain area. So sometimes by uh, reading how he do it, you know, let's say patience, uh, gradual, you know, uh, attitude, uh, the attitude of listening, of uh, um, trying to understand m from multiple angles, and also the habit of listening to the elders. You know, elders, they know a lot. They have the experience. They were born before us. So by listening to them, sometimes you save a lot of money. That is what Hunmani does. He listens to the elder, the elderly politician, and apply those experiences, even though he has never met it before, but he can foresee it and apply those in order to avoid mistakes and to save time. Okay, so um, by what you have raised and also there is another less lesson if I am not wrong, also um, listen and respect to the elderly to gain um, you know, the experience that they have had. All right, so thank you. Um, Mr. Honmani is known as um, the next to a next generation politician. So you, Jamna, as a youth and a Cambodian citizen, um, why do you think it is important for you as well as the other youth to, uh, you know, to find out about the next um, generation politician in our country? It's um, a matter of contemporary time. You listen, you learn from the past, but you never forget the present because the present uh, is what gives rise to the future. As a youth of Cambodia, who are born in, you know, in the modern era right now, of course we learn what the elders have done, you know, what uh, they have contributed, their decision-making. Those are lessons, those are experiences, those 
are the, blueprint, the blueprint that we can use. But we don't live in the past anymore. Now we live in the present. Mm -hmm. And we have people, new people like him, to lead the, the country for, let's say, uh, many, many more years in the future. Not only him, but also many people, you know, at his age. So because of the changing of the society, not only in Cambodia, but also around the world, his idea will not always resemble what happened in the past. His idea now is shaped by the current time, the current perspective. So by studying his uh, perspective, we can predict what happened in the future. And by studying his uh, perspective, we can also understand how much the past has influenced him. And as, you know, um, a youth of Cambodia, who will, let's say, naturally live for many more years to come, Mm -hmm. And we also have, you know, many things to do in our country and for our country, we need to know how they will, you know, envision Cambodia and what they will, what, what they want Cambodia to look like. Generally, because their decision making will impact all of us. All right. Thank you. That is interesting. We should learn about the next generation politicians as uh, we should know um, their vision for the future of our country and also how um, they re um, reflect on the past and then um, to um, develop and improve our society. All right, uh, thank you. Um, in addition to his political involvement, he is also a president of the Union of Youth Federation of Cambodia. That means that he has involved a lot with youth, um, you know, in terms of um, um, the assistance for them to build their capacity as well as um, um, promoting them. So can you tell us what um, activities he has embarked up on with youth and also especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, what has he done with youth and uh, what has he mobilized um, the youth energy um, to fight uh, um, the crisis of the outbreak? So uh, thank you. Uh, beyond his job at the government sector, of course, he has done a lot of activities with youth. Uh, recently, as we can know, COVID-19 has overwhelmed many of the sectors in Cambodia, especially the health sector. And in order for, you know, vaccination and order, in order for, you know, the, the protocol of uh, sanitization to work, um, how many needs help from youth from all over the provinces? Mm -hmm. He recruited many, many, you know, energetic you know young people male and female uh, you know to work in different sector inside the health uh, campaign to combat COVID-19 uh, in the province you know young people help um, old people carrying them to you know um, the hospital they help do the administration work to fill in you know uh, the, the application form for those who cannot read or write properly and people who you know type in uh, let's say uh, information into the computer system I mean those are very very you know tiny uh, let's say work but it demands a lot of dedication and in order to you know support the entire population of Cambodia we need a lot of youth from different places to make that happen and beside from that, he also uh, organized a lot of uh, events in Siem Reap. And one of the, the big events is the Angkor Sankran, uh, where, you know, uh, many, many youth of Cambodia help together. They help to, you know, come up with uh, uh, ideas on how to design, uh, you know, the, the, the ceremony, on how to, you know, attract people, on what to show to foreigners, on what to show to Cambodian people. Furthermore, he also founded a, uh, you know, the Holmini Foundation, a humanitarian fund where he can mobilize funds very easily to different parts of Cambodia when, you know, someone needed or some community needed. And another important thing also related to COVID-19 is that during COVID, the grade 12 uh, student did not learn well at school. Mm -hmm. So um, they also could not do well during the uh, national examination. So in Kampung Spu province, uh, which is his uh, constituency, he conducted um, you know, many, many uh, extra learning hours for those uh, grade 12 examinees uh, at home or at you know, other places. 
so that um, they can pass the exam with a better grade and they did okay uh, thank you thank you so much Jemna. Um, it seems like he has done a lot of activities um, um, to help um, the young people as well as the Cambodian citizen um, especially um, during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic so the book is right now available in Khmer language so I wonder whether um, there will be a English version of this book um, published soon uh, yes, uh, the English version is by now, let's say, 60 to 70 percent completed mm -hmm. and they will be out uh, uh, in a few months. Okay, so that means uh, the work is still in the process. Okay. Yes, it so is still in process, but not for too long. Yeah. Yes, I hope sooner I, uh, the readers can uh, read uh, the book in English version. Alright, thank you. Thank you so much, Jemna, for your comprehensive and clear explanation as well as um, the brief overview on the book. Although your explanation is kind of detailed but not telling the whole story. So, um, for those, uh, for the readers and those who are interested in this book, um, you can make a purchase um, through Thumai Thumai News and the following uh, phone number. Um, our discussion has come to an end and I hope that um, the reader might have taken some key takes away from our discussion um, regarding the main characters of the book. Uh, goodbye.